Hey everybody, it's Benji, better known as Moi Sierra. Um, first, I'm going to start this video off without giving you an update. I'm sorry, I've been MIA, but um, I had a cold last week and then I've just been working a lot. So, um, I'm trying to get back into my mojo again because I have to stay consistent. How are you doing? So, um, today's video is going to be pretty much about filling the void. And what I mean by filling the void is like... If you're at this place in your life where you feel that a lot of things are out of your control and how to like fill the void to be better like I mean far as in love life and just pretty much happiness and I'm gonna do a little breakdown of that and all that stuff too and um, I just really want people to be aware that filling the void doesn't mean that you need to have somebody in your life to fill that void for you you don't need to have money in your life to fill that void for you and you need to be happy to fill that void but it's just it's important to make sure that no matter what's going on that you're always at the center of what you are being impacted by because at the end of the day it really won't matter what you're impacted by if you're not taking it all in from the core so um first i'll just start with life because you know you're living your life that's why you're watching this video boom but anyway um Right, so I think something about as far as in living life and how to feel that way. Sometimes you have to take yourself out of your own perspective in order to, you know, really soak it all in. Like me, I stay in Chicago and it can be very hectic here. Like, it's like everything's going like this and sometimes it feel like you're just, you know, treading like water. And sometimes you have to like kind of just shut down and it's not because you're trying to be rude or neglect anything or anyone or whatever but it's just sometimes you have to get back to that place where you can walk back into it and feel like you're embracing it all over again you know like it's like you know stop riding a bike for a long time and then you just come back in riding it or whatever like you you feel that so it's sometimes important to do that, like to rejuvenate yourself and make sure that you're always in tune with what's going on and making sure that you feel very prosperous about how to get there, how you're going to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one way of, um, you know, doing things of kind of like shutting down and coming back into it so you can be more in tune and, and really like what you're doing because sometimes, you know, you may love doing something so much, but at the same time, it seems like you're only doing it to defeat half the battle and not the whole battle. And you can kind of get stressful sometimes, you know, and you just always want to be happy and excited about doing things over and over again because in life it does re things do repeat itself you know you're going to your job every day that's repeating itself you know if you're you know married or whatever the case may be that's kind of like repeating yourself but I mean in a good way so that's how you want to be able to embrace you know opportunities and things like that because you want to be feeling like you're walking into something new um, I would say love. Dun, 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 dun. You know, the most troubling thing about love is when you have it, when you don't, and when you're in it. And what I mean is by when you have love, sometimes you don't always feel 100% about it. Then, when you don't have it, you don't feel like you have any percentage about it. And then when you're in it, you feel like you only have like 50% about it. So... What I mean by, you know, filling the void when it comes to love is the fact that you don't have to be in love to be loved or feel loved, you know. And a method to fill that void is me. Like, see, I was going through a couple of things a couple of years ago. And what I did was I had latched on to, like, some, some TV series or whatever. This is just my method because it worked for me because I felt the need that I wanted to kind of just be in the zone. And that took me out of what was currently going on with my own problems and things. And I was able to just pretty much do it, not live it with, <laughs> within the TV show, but it's just that it took me to a place where I felt comfortable with just watching and not really having to think so much about what was really going on, even though I did think about it. But I have to think about it too much to the point where I was just like, oh, Lord. Uh, 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 uh. You know, that wasn't what I wanted to get out of it. But it was cleansing, you know, because I was able to 
you know, put pieces together to things that I probably did see and didn't see or whatever the case may be, whatever. I don't want to sound redundant because I may have said this in the, uh, another video. I don't know, but we'll see. But then, um, it just was like a learning process for me. It gave me the, the courage to build up the, the guard that I didn't want to be put down. And what I mean by that is, like, I don't want to let these things happen again. So by putting up that guard, I made sure those things didn't happen again. Now, I ain't trying to bash nobody or put nobody under, under, you know, hot water, but I'm just saying. It's just, that's just how I felt. I needed to prioritize those things to make sure that it wouldn't go down that way again. So, <clears throat> by me, I watched something on TV, and that worked for me, you know. And by that working for me, it was a strong method for me to build up the self-esteem that I felt that I was losing due to this and that going this kind of way, you know, because I was in love, I was out of love, and then I was with love, you know, so it just, it was all a big old, you know, turbulence, and I just kind of had to, you know, grab it by the ears and then just, you know, shake some sense into it, which I did. So, um, I would say, if, if you don't feel like a TV series, I think really dive head first in something that you know that you're going to really enjoy. Something that you know that always is like a comfort zone. I ain't saying food, but I'm talking about something that you know that is really like empowering. Something that really makes you feel liberating, you know. And that's what you really need to do in order to get to that place to fill that void. Lastly, but not least, happiness. So, happiness. The most, it's, it's the, the hardest thing in the world to just really be happy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a naturally happy person, but I do have a lot of moments when I'm not A-OK, -okay, and then there's a lot of things that I'm like, why me? Why me? Why me? But you know what? What I think about is the fact that you only have one life to live. And, you know, it's, a, it's the corniest line in the United States of America. You know, but it's the fact that you only have one life to live. And you have to know that regardless, of if, if if you got bills up the ass, or you got this going on, and this ain't working out, you only have one life to live. And you have to be happy. And if, if you know that you're not happy, or you're not trying to get to a place where you want to be happy, then that's when you know that you have to stop doing whatever you're doing to get back to that place. You know, and a lot of folks struggle with that because when you want to be happy there's a lot of things that kind of you know get in the way and you looking like people are always trying to you know you know knock me down or hate on me or whatever but scratch all of that because happiness starts within yourself can't nobody take that away from you no matter if they say something nasty to you or not it's all about who you are as a person you know and that's something that you have to really be strong about so by filling that void of happiness, you seek what you know who you really are or what you really want to do. Because at the end of the day, what they said, that comment, it may hurt you in the long run, but your happiness is going to gain your perspective for eternity. You know, like, that, that that's what you have to think about. You know, like, they always say, like, the, you know, the negative outweighs the positive or whatever. And that's true to an extent. But you have to be the person that's holding on to that 75% of positivity to make sure that you don't have to worry about somebody trying to, you know, constantly throw sticks at you. Because you're going to catch some motherfucking sticks, boop, and, you know, toss that shit back at them, boop, boop. But at the end of the day, it's like you really want to make sure that when you lay your head at night, you're thankful for living another day, corny again, but true, and you want to make sure that you, you're at peace. And if you're not, you make sure you find yourself to get at peace. So, with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. Um, I'm back in the mojo, so y'all should have some more videos coming soon. So, um, everything will be cool. Um, I love you guys, and until next time.